Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 28th. First up, I would like to thank Desmosa DC Alice for this article from telegraph.co.uk, another one on invisibility cloak and updating. Uh, we're still not talking about the kind of invisibility cloak like Harry Potter. We're talking about invisibility in the microwave bands around 3 gigahertz, which is well within the radar bands and these all seem to be military related which makes a heck of a lot of sense they've come up with a new material called plasmonic metamaterials that evidently the way they are shaped they uh, produce an electrical discharge that scatters the waves and causes an interference pattern and it takes the oncoming microwaves from the radar and cancels them out by the combination of incoming waves and the reflected waves they cancel each other out uh, one little quarrel I have with this article though is they say it makes it not only invisible but transparent I would debate that because unless you can actually curve light waves or photons around an object and I'm not talking just visible ones I'm talking about the photons of all the different wavelengths you're not really making an object transparent it is still um, basically a, a, I would call it like a black hole against the sky so if radar ever does get sensitive enough to where it can detect background radiation in the sky which is all bandwidths depending on the level and all frequencies you're still going to be sticking out as a giant um, well, let me explain it this way it would be like a person in the daytime wearing black yeah you would uh, if they had if the material was black enough it would be absorbing all light and you wouldn't technically be seeing them but you're still going to see this big dark shape against things that are lit up so the same way um, an object against the sky it's still a black object against a background so for present days with radars not being that sensitive it's fine it will render you invisible but um, I debate the term transparent that they used in the article but check it out it's a really cool article and uh, if this is what we're getting to know right now which you know the top secret stuff they never do uh, it may be a lot further along than even what we're reading I talked about in the past about possibly having small satellites setting up our own network. Well, guess what? This has been going on for a little while. This is from the pages of Popular Science Magazine, and I would encourage you to get Popular Science Magazine. If you subscribe for 24 months, it's less than a dollar an issue, so you can't really get better than that. But this one is also online. Uh, how disposable network satellites will democratize space. They're talking about little 4-inch by 4-inch cubes that can launch aboard other, they'll piggyback aboard other satellite launches so the cost is way lower than a conventional satellite and obviously with a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube the cost of building the satellite is way way less. Um, we're still talking about significant cost because it's just a new development and uh, they're talking about a hundred different schools are involved in this and it's possible right now you can start designing one of these things your freshman year and actually see it launched as a satellite before you graduate from college they have one student that's actually developing one with an ion drive that he's hoping to piggyback aboard a launch and actually take it all the way to the moon using the ion drive. It's really cool even the uh, uh, Air Force is going to use a set of two of these cubes to communicate back and forth with each other and network to do weather forecasts so uh, I think this would be a good thing in the future to set up to be a uh, totally free uh, I guess internet you know underground internet or above ground internet whatever you want to call it but a, a satellite easily you know usable satellite network of uh, if we can get enough of them up in the sky it would be a good possibility um, this next one was sent in by 67 K Neil this guy in 1968 I, I love these gadgets especially it's unbelievable how the old gadgets can still be so cool even nowadays with all the technical stuff we have this is a record player a portable record player totally mechanical about the size of a VHS tape and uh, this guy rescued it out of a rubbish pile in 1968 and this video shows a short demonstration of him uh, cranking it up and actually playing a record with this thing so I thought that was kinda cool. Put, put me to the mind of the fact when I was a kid in the uh, early 60's they had portable record players for cars uh, I think the ones that I saw would play a 45 RPM record obviously it wasn't one that you could use effectively while the car was moving but I think it was more for a car being parked I remember one being a swing out under dash mount and another one that <coughs> excuse me plugged into the cigarette lighter that I think you sat on the seat so I guess if you parked with your girlfriend you could play records or whatever and this one was sent in by BC65925 
The title of the article is Mustang Church's Ministries. Mustang Church Ministries Motorcycle Makeover Surprises Military Man. This guy had an old late 60s, early 70s. I can't tell exactly. Maybe you guys could uh, get the exact year of it, but it's a CB450 Honda. And uh, he basically got it as a, a vehicle that was damaged and was going to use it as a project and just didn't get around to it. Went off into service, and his buddies decided to get together and totally do a restoration for him as a gift. And it's uh, really cool how they totally restored this thing and got it ready by the time he got back home. Um, if the significant thing about this particular bike, too, which I think makes it well worth restoring, is the CB450 was one of the first Hondas, and I think maybe one of the first common motorcycles that had a 10 to 1 horsepower ratio. In other words, a, a 450cc would produce close to 45 horsepower, and I believe depending on the model of the CB450, you could get anywhere from 43 to 45 horsepower out of it, and it also had torsion springs for the um, valve springs, which was really unusual to conventional uh, valve springs or coil springs, and torsion springs is just taking a, a metal bar and the twisting action of the bar provides the spring action, and this is how the valves work. So that was a kind of cool thing, I thought. So if you get a chance to check this out, if anybody can identify the year of the bike and everything, uh, please put it down in the comments. And last up, okay, last year I predicted the Super Bowl, and I did a pretty good job. I hit the score exactly on the head. I said Green Bay by a touchdown, and Green Bay won by six points. So I'm going to go out on a limb this year, and I'm going to give my prediction. The Vegas line right now is calling for the Patriots by a, um, a field goal. I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to say it's going to be the Giants by a field goal. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a chance to beat me in the call if you want to take a try. For the next three days, I'm only going to count comments. You have to post your comments Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. If your comments posted Wednesday and beyond, well, you know, you, you're still welcome to make a guess, but anybody the, of those three days, you post your comment, and if you beat me on the call for the Super Bowl, you can pick the subject that I talk about on a future TDD report. I'll try to do it either the following week or the week after, but you pick a subject for me to talk about. Now, realize you pick a subject I don't know much about or I'm not able to find out much about. It might not be much of a talk, but if you pick a subject that you particularly like and uh, Especially, it will probably work out best if you pick something to do with science, technology, motorcycles, something like that. But uh, you make the call, and uh, I'll do my best to talk on it, at least uh, from my experience. So uh, see if you can actually beat the burb. We'll call this beat the burb at the Super Bowl call. See what you can end up doing. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.